So you're first getting into photography or you've been in it for a while, but you're still kind of confused and overwhelmed with all the lens choices out there. Well, I've been doing photography for a few years now and I think I've come up with my favorite three lens choices you should start off with. And it's these guys right here. And your primary lens will be the 2470, supplemented by a 7200 or 7180. And finally, some sort of prime like a Nifty 50. I know raising the table was kind of lame, but I kind of wanted to do it because I love this. But anyways, why are these lenses the optimal way where I think you should spend your money first when diving into the world of photography? First, this is the 2470, and I think it's the first lens anyone should get. But why is that? Well, it's gonna help you on a lot of photography endeavors. If you're doing landscape photography, 24 millimeters is plenty wide enough for most situations. If you're a landscape or nature photographer and you're hiking, it's kind of nice knowing that you can just bring one lens, not have to worry about carrying multiple lenses with you. You can, but just the weight savings in your backpack is sometimes enough of a reason to only carry one lens. This lens doesn't only stop at landscape photography. Because it's a zoom lens, you can shoot in very popular focal lengths like 35 millimeters or 50 millimeters. And while the S it doesn't get up to that 85 millimeter portrait lens length that everyone loves. I use this lens primarily at weddings, and these photos I'm playing for you right here were taken using that 2470 lens, and I find it very rare that I move off this lens at a wedding shoot. But sometimes 70 millimeters is not enough, so that's why the next lens you should get is a 7180 or a 7200. This is the Tamron 7180. The only particular reason why I got a 7180 instead of your traditional 7200 is because I wanted to see what the quality of the picture of a Tamron compared to a Sigma lens was. But regardless, if you get a 7180 or a 7200, it's gonna do a very similar job. Touching on landscape and nature photography, the 7180, if you're close to an animal or subject in nature, you can still get some pretty cool shots like these right here. But what a lot of newer photographers don't realize is shooting landscape photography, while it's great on 24 millimeters, you can get kind of creative shooting at 70 or 180 or anything else in between on the zoom lens. Take this photo of a lighthouse, for example. I was very far away and I took this shot using 180 millimeters. And because I was so far away and because I was shooting at such a long focal length, it compressed the image very well and I was able to bring that rock wave breaker closer to the lighthouse despite it being so far away because of that compression. Now in a more professional setting, if you're doing something like weddings, sometimes you're shooting a ceremony where you can't get close enough with 70 millimeters and having a B camera with a nice zoom lens that goes up to 180 or 200 millimeters is gonna allow you to get some pretty hard to get shots like if you were in a church where you can't really get close to the altar. So I often keep this guy on like my B camera so I can get those tough to get far away shots. The third lens I'm gonna recommend is a little bit more of a niche camera. These are very versatile, this is very specific. This is what's called a prime lens. It's a 55 millimeter, but I'm gonna recommend a nifty 50, so 50 millimeter. And what you're gonna get with prime lenses that you don't really get with zoom lenses is a much lower aperture number. This one goes on f1.8. That's going to give you a nice blurry, out of focus background and make your subject pop, giving you that depth of field and like layers in your photo. When I'm doing my portrait sessions with my couples, I often put this on one of my cameras so I can get that separation of couple and background. Because of the f1.8, it also performs a lot better in low light. Sometimes these f2.8 lenses just aren't bright enough to get the shot I want in a certain environment. But low light and separation of background isn't the only thing that a Nifty 50 or any prime lens is gonna give you. One of my favorite things about prime lenses isn't really anything to do with the lens itself. It's the fact that it forces you to shoot in a certain focal length. This engages you to think creatively, think differently in how you can try and get your shot. Instead of getting into the trap of zooming in and out to get your shot, as a caveat, I don't recommend that. You should pick the focal length you wanna shoot for the shot you're trying to get and back up and move forward to get that shot. This forces you to not get into that trap. So having at least one good prime lens is gonna help you think more creatively, moving around your environment to try and get different shots that work with this lens, instead of getting lazy, zooming in and out. So there you have it. These are the three lenses I would recommend for you to start off photography. Shopping for your first lens, it's a very daunting task. I'm here to help you out. Feel free to ask any questions at all down in the comments. I do a pretty good job at replying to all of them as I can. Anyways, thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And until next time, I'll catch you in the next one.